Hello and welcome everybody. Today we are going to be talking about how to soundproof your HVAC system, heating, cooling, ventilation system. And this is a topic that a lot of people have a lot of questions about. So I'm going to try and answer some of the most important things you want to think about when designing your soundproof studio, your soundproof room, and incorporating your HVAC system into that. Before we jump into this video, I want to let you know that I have a free soundproofing workshop that is available at soundproofyourstudio.com. This is a 40 minute workshop that will go in depth into how to design your entire soundproof studio. So if you want to build a soundproof recording studio, definitely check out that workshop and go to soundproofyourstudio.com. All right, let's jump into the lesson today about how to soundproof your HVAC system. <laughs> So the first thing I want to talk about is that the best way to ensure that your HVAC system is going to be quiet when the air enters your room is to increase the duct size. So a traditional duct system in your house may be pretty small, and a lot of us can notice that we're hearing the air coming through the vents and entering into the room. In a studio setting, you definitely obviously don't wanna have any sound coming in through your ventilation system, through your ducts. So to do that, what we do is we just increase the size of the duct coming into the room of our studio. So a good rule of thumb here is that you want to have between 100 and 300 feet per minute of air passing through your duct system and entering into your studio. So what that means is that the airflow through your ducts is moving at 100 feet every minute or 300 feet every minute. Ideally 100 is going to be better, 300 is kind of the maximum range uh, that you want to shoot for when designing your HVA system. So with my system for example, I have an ERV, which is an energy recovery ventilator, that is pulling air from the outside, sending it through my duct system, and putting it into my studio. Now my ERV is set for 60 cubic feet per minute. So that means that it is pulling in 60 cubic feet every single minute of air and sending it into my system. So I knew that if I have a baffle box, which I'll talk about later in this video, that is one foot by one foot wide, then that airflow will be 60 feet per minute going through that baffle box. So I'm getting well under the 100 feet per minute that is ideal and well under the 300 feet per minute that is, is recommended. So keep that in mind, the cubic feet that your system is generating and sending into your studio so that you have the enough air to enjoy comfort and have enough fresh air exchange for fresh air in your studio, that cubic feet amount is the number you wanna look at and then you can design your duct system so that you can slow that air down. So as you can see, this is sort of theoretical. You wanna talk with your HVAC designer, your HVAC specialist, and tell them these things so that they can actually implement that into your design. Or if you're super handy and know how to do it yourself, keep that in mind as well as you're designing your HVAC system. Number two is you want to keep in mind that right angle bends will cause turbulence in your duct system. So when you are designing your system, it's best if you can try to minimize the amount of right angle bends right at the outlet into your studio room, because that will add just a little bit of noise as the air makes that right angle bend. So the best thing to do is to try to keep those bends five to 10 meters away from the outlet or as far as you can from the outlet entering your room. Number three, is to use round ducts whenever possible. Rectangular duct systems will actually create more noise because of the air disturbance that you're having with the rectangular duct system. So a rounded duct system that is non-rigid and smooth is going to have the least restriction and it will make it so you don't get as much noise. So using those round smooth duct systems is the best option and having them insulated as well is also a bonus. Now, before we jump into this next part of the video, I want to say that up until this point, I've talked about incorporating a duct system from your HVAC system in your house or in your apartment or wherever you're building. Let's say you have an HVAC system that's already supplying air to your house and you want to incorporate it into your studio design. So one other thing I want to mention is that you know, this is kind of common sense, but the farther you can get the actual unit, the actual noise making 
HVAC system from your studio, the better. So if you're building in a basement, for example, having the heating and cooling unit as far as possible on the other side of the basement and having your studio on the other half of the basement would be the most ideal situation. That way you also get those long, big air ducts that will take time to reduce the amount of sound that's coming from the fan and then also it will slow down the air so you don't hear the air noise coming in as well. Okay, just wanted to say that another thing to think about is how to actually soundproof around your duct system once it enters your studio. So if you have a, a studio where you have multiple rooms or if you want multiple outlets in your room, then you're gonna wanna build a soffit system. And what a soffit system is, is simply continuing your soundproofing around the duct system that you are sending into your studio so that the duct itself is soundproof as well. And in this diagram right here from the soundproofing company, you can see a great cross section of an example of a soffit system. Uh, this is a little bit beyond this video, but I wanted to show you this just to give you an idea of what it looks like. You can see there's a round duct in there with insulation around it, and then the two layers of drywall with green glue in the middle, and they built a frame around to create the soffit around the ducting. So that gives you an idea of how a soffit system works once the actual ducting enters the studio room. All right. Now I wanna close off with number four, which is a baffle box system. This is what I actually used in my studio. I have a mini split system where I'm actually heating and cooling my room with a mini split, but it doesn't provide any fresh air, which this is another thing that you can talk uh, learn about with uh, my ventilation video, which is above me right here if you wanna learn more about why that is and how that all works. But as you can see here, I have a baffle box in a separate room next to my studio where I'm using the ERB to send air through this tubing, as you can see here, and then it enters into my baffle box. Now the baffle box is slowing down the air and then it's going through a series of right angle turns, which I know I said right angle turns are bad, but I'll explain that in a second. And then it's coming out the other end into my studio. The same goes in reverse with the baffle box where it's sucking stale air out of my studio. It's going through a separate baffle box through the 90 degree turns and then going back out through the ERV and pumped at back outside where the stale air is released. So all this said, what a baffle box does is it allows you to have a soundproof way of getting air in and out of your studio without having to have ducting that travels long distances or building a soffit system. So for my studio, this was perfect because I had my ERV in the separate room and I just wanted the air to go through a little baffle box system and then pump directly through my wall into my studio without having a soffit or any ducting in my studio itself. So if you have a similar situation, where you just want your exit registers to be on your soundproof wall in your studio, then this is a great system for you. And I can tell you that it is incredibly soundproof. It works remarkably well. And let's jump into actually how to design this. So the main thing to think about with a baffle box is you wanna get the sizing right. So again, this one foot by one foot design that I had in my baffle box is slowing that 60 cubic feet per minute down to 60 feet per minute of airflow, and you can barely feel that air as it's coming through the registers into my studio, and you definitely cannot hear it, even though it's right behind my mix position. So it's pretty incredible. Now, if we look at this design right here, you can see that the air coming in is going through a six inch hole on the inlet, and the outlet is a one foot by one foot exit into my studio. Now this part is crucial because you want to have double the size on the exit that you did on the inlet. So with this system, because I have a one foot by one foot exit, I wanted a six inch round duct coming into my baffle box. And then you do a series of right angle turns. You wanna make sure that you use fiberglass insulation that is specific for HVAC uh, applications that you line your entire baffle box with that. That'll help with sound attenuation and noise that might be traveling through your box. So that'll reduce all that. Then you wanna make sure that you have a high end register coming out uh, so that the sound that's coming out of the baffle box and into your room doesn't create noise as it enters the room. And I highly recommend Nailer Industries, that's who I used, and I'll have a link to the regis exact register I used in the description below, as well as the exact fiberglass insulation I used in the description below. 
So just to address the 90 degree angle thing with the baffle box, the reason for the 90 degree angles is to reduce the sound that could be traveling through your baffle box. Since this is such a small box and it doesn't have the distance that you would have with say like a traditional duct system going through a soffit into your studio, you wanna make sure that any sound that's in that extra room right next to your studio gets lost in the 90 degree turns and is completely reduced so that you don't hear anything except the very, very, very subtle, uh, very subtle sound of the air passing through into your room. All right, so let's go over everything again. In conclusion, here is what you wanna think about. Remember, number one, you wanna have big ducts. That is the number one thing that will help with reducing sound in your HVAC system, is having large enough ducts so you can get down to that 100 to 300 feet per minute airflow. Number two, remember that right angle bends do create turbulence and extra noise, so try to reduce them as much as possible, unless you're building a baffle box, and keep them as far from the outlet entering your soundproof room as possible. Number three, use round ducting that's not rigid ducting when possible because it has the least amount of friction in your airflow, thus making it much more quieter than rectangular ducting. And number four, use a baffle box system if it fits for your studio, if it looks like the design uh, would work well with just having a small baffle box system and then shooting that air into your studio. Consider that as a great option for soundproofing. It works well, it's what I did, and I can't recommend it enough. All right, I hope you have gained some new knowledge about how to soundproof your HVAC system, and hopefully this has given you some food for thought. If you wanna take a deeper dive into how to do all this, then check out that free soundproofing workshop at soundproofyourstudio.com. 40 minutes of in-depth teaching, teaching you how to build a soundproof studio. All right, until next Monday, thank you all so much for watching, or if you're on the podcast, thank you so much for listening, and I will see you all later.